For at TV, the world is thinking. I think most physicists, those who accept that there is a problem, resort to something that, that they call the anthropic principle, which I think is rather elegant, although many physicists hate it. Um, we could only be living in the kind of universe which is capable of giving rise to us. So the fact that we are observing anything at all means that we are in that kind of universe. Now, some physicists stop there and say, end of story. Because we are here, we in a sense create the necessity for the, for the laws of physics that, that, that make it possible for us to be here. I agree with those who don't find that totally, totally uh, satisfying. Um, the philosopher John Leslie expresses his dissatisfaction with it by, um, in, in, by imagining a man facing a firing squad and um, there are ten men in the firing squad, they all aim their rifles at him, the rifles all go off and he finds himself still alive. And so he says to himself, well, obviously I, I, the, 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 the rifles all missed because otherwise I wouldn't be here. But that leaves unexplained why the rifles all missed. You still feel you need an explanation for why they all missed. Um, an, a version of the anthropic principle does answer that, and that's the one that I think many physicists, including the present astronomer royal, Martin Rees, favors. Um, there are, I gather, and physicists here may correct me, independent reasons to believe that the universe in which we are is only one of billions of universes. They describe it as a foam, a a bubble foam of universes, and we're just in one bubble. And all the different bubbles in the foam have different fundamental constants and different laws. And the great majority of them have their knobs tuned in to different places and do not give rise to the conditions where evolution becomes possible. There's only a small minority of these universes in which the conditions the fundamental constants make evolution possible, and now the anthropic principle comes in. We have to be in one of that minority of universes. So it's a kind of Darwinism, Darwinian selection of universes. Um, there's a, one physicist called Lee Smolin who makes it very much more explicitly Darwinian. He actually thinks that universes give birth to daughter universes. Uh, he suggests in black holes. So that there's a kind of family tree of universes and each universe can trace its pedigree backwards through its mother universe, its grandmother universe, and so on. And at the moment of birth, which he considers to be a black hole, the laws and constants of physics in the, in the daughter universe are slightly tweaked versions of the mother universe's laws and constants. Now, the qualities that make for a successful universe, success in the Darwinian sense of giving birth to baby universes, are qualities like lasting long enough to form galaxies and stars and therefore black holes, because you need black holes to, make the, to, to, give, to give birth to baby universes. And those are the very same qualities that you need in order to give rise to the conditions for life. So Smolin even thinks of a kind of natural selection and an actual evolutionary progression towards universes that get better and better at building baby universes and Co coincidentally get better and better at making the conditions for, for evolution. The Smolin theory is not widely accepted by other physicists, but the weaker version of the anthropic principle um, favored by Martin Rees, the astronomer, and many others is uh, strongly favored by many physicists.